From Outpost Gray and Grant Thornton Public Sector, we provide you the CyberFed News Roundup, tech news that matters. Hello and happy Friday, September 16th, 2022. I'm your host, Jack Scott, and today I am providing you the CyberFed News Roundup for the week of September 12th. Let's get into it. The United States continues to lag behind the European Union in terms of data protection and privacy. Ever since the EU ratified the GDPR, the U.S. has failed to keep pace. Every state is using a different type of data protection and privacy law, but nothing is codified on a federal level. The proposed American Data Privacy and Protection Act attempts to match the EU with their GDPR and moves the states further in better data protection nationally. However, the ADPPA draft has fallen short of lawmakers' expectations. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi said in a statement this week that The American Data Privacy and Protection Act does not guarantee the same essential consumer protections as California's existing privacy laws. With this recent statement, it appears lawmakers are going back to the drawing board to refine this draft before voting will occur. Peter Zacco, the Twitter whistleblower and ex-security lead for Twitter, testified on September 13th about the security failures of Twitter. His testimony was captured in 84 pages, which covered concerns around Chinese, Indian, and Saudi spies on Twitter's payroll. If these accusations are true, these users could have had access to personal user information and potentially other proprietary information. Mudge also discussed the thousands of failed login attempts on Twitter's system weekly. He stated there would be roughly 3,000 failed attempts per day, which was a huge red flag. When bringing this forward to the chief technology officer at Twitter, the issue was not analyzed, diagnosed, or fixed. The Twitter security concerns are far from over. Mudge's disclosure could be the cause the U.S. government needed to increase oversight on the internet and companies like Twitter, Meta, and others that handle big data and store sensitive information while working across borders. NIST is making big moves in the chip making business. NIST is collaborating with Google and will start making semiconductor chips that researchers and tech startups will use. The chip will be made by Skywater Technology in Bloomington, Minnesota. NIST director said in a statement, this is a great example of how government, industry, and academia researchers can work together to enhance U.S. leadership in this critically important industry. Numerous universities are also collaborating on this project, and they include the University of Michigan, the University of Maryland, George Washington University, Brown University, and Carnegie Mellon University. This project is part of the CHIPS Act passed last month to help build and create microchips in America. According to a new memo by the White House, supply chain concerns are still a hot topic with Congress. The Office of Management and Budget issued a memo this week titled Enhancing the Security of the Software Chain Through Secure Software Development Practices. This was following the solar winds attack, which impacted 18,000 government entities and Fortune 500 companies. The memo focuses on agencies utilizing software with a formalized cybersecurity practice and software assurance processes. The White House urges organizations to be wary of companies that conduct self-attestation of their software. Instead, it encourages the use of software from vendors who use a third-party assessment certification like FedRAMP or third-party assessor organizations to certify their software falls within NIST guidance. Agencies have eight different requirements they must complete in the next 120 days to be compliant with this memo. The provisions to the fiscal year 2023 Defense Authorization Bill are raising concerns among industry leaders. This week, the Alliance for Digital Innovation, the Software Alliance, the Cybersecurity Coalition, and the Information Technology Industry Association addressed the House and the Senate Armed Services and Oversight Leadership concerning Section 6722 of the 2023 NDAA. 
This provision requires vendors to provide a bill of materials reflecting they are free from all known vulnerabilities or defects that could affect end users. The concern industry leaders had were around the vagueness and lack of scoping of this provision, which they believe could create confusion and further problems. If section 6722 stays as is, it could create confusion for the vendors to know if the bill of materials is limited to the software or all components. Lawmakers are working together to build upon the White House efforts along with DHS and CISA language to create effective supply chain security focused provisions in the NDAA. The State Department is offering a $10 million bounty for any information on Iranian hackers. This week, the Justice Department announced charges against three Iranian individuals accused of cyber attacks starting in October 2020. Some targeted countries include the U.S., Russia, Israel, the United Kingdom, and Iran. Many of the victims of these attacks paid ransom to the attackers. The FBI added the individuals to their most wanted list, and the State Department is offering a $10 million reward for any information on these individuals. This indictment came a week after the White House publicly condemned Iran for allegedly carrying out widespread cyber attacks in July on the Albanian government. The Justice Department believes that even if the Iranian hackers are not found, the public indictment will make them fugitives, limiting their freedom of movement and ability to live Iran. That concludes your Cyber Fed News Roundup for the week of September 12th. I hope you enjoyed what you heard here. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and share this episode out with others. I will see you all next week.